Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman, and you're now listening to the Word of Deliverance. Thank you for tuning in to our program. Melody Biddymo and Michelle Patton is with me today. Mark McComas is off today. He's got a little bit of flu bug or something, plus he had to work, so y'all remember him in prayer. Now, Melanie, tell us where we're going today. I understand the people today, I don't think they totally understand what 1 Peter 1.18 means mm -hmm. and how it relates to Matthew 26, verse 28. Yes, sir. So I know you're going to tell the people, bring it to them. Yes, this is a really good program. And, you know, we were asking the question, do people even understand what a covenant consists of? So today you're going to know. So we suggest to get a piece of paper, a pencil, and start writing these um, scriptures down because we believe that this is one of the most important keys to knowledge that we can have is understanding a covenant, how it consists, and specifically concerning this covenant, we're going to talk about the blood that sealed the deal with this covenant. And that blood is of Jesus Christ. We can see in 1 Peter 1.18, it tells us we have not been redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, but it tells you in verse 19 what we've been redeemed by or who we've been redeemed by. It's the precious blood of Christ who was as a lamb without blemish and without a spot. And just knowing those couple things right there, that the blood of Jesus Christ is available or this covenant through Jesus Christ is available unto all who believe and will repent and accept this great salvation that Jesus Christ has to offer unto the world. And with that being stated, let's go over to Matthew 26, chapter 26, verse 28 and 29. You can say 29 if you want, but the great one is in verse 28. Michelle, you want to read it? Yes, it says, well, verse 27, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, to his disciples, saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So this is the blood of the new, it's the symbolic of the blood of the new covenant that Christ has shed his blood for us for the remission of of sins for many just not one group of people but for all who would believe and you know the bible talks about in hebrews chapter 9 how all things were um sprinkled by the blood but they had to give an but that in order for them to get in covenant and have the blood sprinkled upon them they had to agree to all the laws that moses had read unto them from the book and if you go to Hebrews chapter 9, verses 18 through 22, it talks about how that all things, it says almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. So th this is the reason why Jesus had to shed his blood for the remission of sins. And if you look over to Hebrews chapter 9, once you get in covenant, and once you agree like they did over in exodus chapter 24 mm -hmm. moses read the book audibly to the, all the people and they agreed everything that you said in the laws of god we will do and be obedient once you agree to the laws of god and to laws of jesus christ and agree to be obedient to the spirit then in hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 it talks about how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, it will purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So right there are some great benefits that we can have. You mentioned about that Hebrews 9, 14, we can even have a purged conscience, mm -hmm. cleansed, renewed. And, you know, this is a great gift that God hath given us through his son, Jesus Christ. And what we must understand, like we stated to begin the message, is with the covenant, we must understand what the covenant consists of. If we're going to say that we're born again, this is where the covenant, so to say, seals the deal. 
Part of that covenant, as Michelle read in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 19 through 20, it tells us that the blood was, so to say, sprinkled upon the book. And this is what enjoins us, or this is how we become one with the book. Jesus is the book. Jesus is our Bible, and this shows us if we're with another Bible or with another book that we're no longer in covenant, so to say, with Jesus Christ because our covenant was sprinkled upon that precise book. You know what we're saying? Amen. That precise book. There's no other book out there but the book, so to say, our Bible. Mm -hmm. King James Version is what we suggest because there's many other books that have been created for the intention of getting people away from the truth and covenant in Jesus Christ. Remember you had mentioned the New King James Version, how they had taken several scriptures out of there. Mm -hmm. They've changed it. They've taken um, actually their, the words in the New King James Version and changed a lot of words and changed a lot of meaning of the verses in the New King James Versions and taken a lot of words out of it. Mm -hmm. And in the NIV... They've taken lots of verses, I think 14 verses they've taken out. Mm -hmm. And there's been over 6,000 words that they've taken out of the Bible. Yeah. I mean, what if Moses came down and took the words out of the commandments of God, of the laws of God and said, well, God, you know, they won't understand this. So mm -hmm. I have to change it so they can understand it. And what if he took it out of the words? Then they couldn't get in covenant with the laws of God because that's not what God had told him to write down. Well, we see in Revelations twenty two nineteen what happens to people who do take things out of the scriptures. Revelations twenty two nineteen it says, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, some say that's referring to Revelations. We say the book because the book is the Bible as a whole, complete, entire, period. And it says that God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So in other words, whoever's name is not written in the book of life is going to be cast into the lake of fire. And this is God's word and it stands true. But what we're saying, even with Jesus Christ on he is the word. Many of you know St. John chapter 1. Jesus is the word. The beginning was the word. You guys know how to quote that scripture. Jesus is the word. And this shows us the need of staying in the Bible. Because if we're going to be nourished up in the word of God, if we're going to be nourished up in Jesus Christ... We must be in our word. Michelle, is there something that you want to share, too, with the people? I just want to say not only does the blood of Jesus purge our conscience and make our conscience become alive, but according to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, it says, And having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So we, know there, we now therefore need no longer a priest. We don't need... Um, or a Jewish priest, we don't need a Catholic priest, but we can enter in into the holiest and pray unto the Father directly by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Amen. And you know, as we're talking about the blood and what the blood does for us, Michelle just read a great scripture showing how that through and by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have access even to pray. In other words, if you look back in the Old Testament, only the priests were allowed behind the veil. But after Jesus Christ, he paid the price and the, the veil was rent in twain. And his blood, so to say, as we go in through his body and have access unto God and have his blood sprinkled upon us, you can see what we become immediately when the blood of Jesus Christ is sprinkled upon us after we get into covenant with him. That scripture that substantiates that statement, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It tells about how Jesus Christ was that rock, of a, rock a stone of stumbling. Many stumble at Jesus Christ. Many were offended at Jesus Christ and many were disobedient, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And once you receive this power to become his sons, verse nine of first Peter chapter two is what happens. He says, ye are a chosen generation. Here we go. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we should be able to go forth and show the praises of him who have called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Amen. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, But now in, the, in Christ Jesus, 
ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So those that are Gentiles, they are now able to come to God and able to be part of is the true Israel of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's another great benefit. Mm -hmm. And even in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, talks about in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. As we're saying this, we've mentioned many, many scriptures telling us about the blood of Jesus Christ, how it seals the covenant, how many benefits that go with it. Think about Jesus Christ as being the creator of all things. He is perfect. His blood is perfect. There was none other that's more perfect than him. He is Alpha and Omega. He is God and he's the creator of all things. And think of how great you can become, so to say, not in this world. This world's not our home. Our, our home is, so to say, in heaven. You know, and think how great you can become and think of how wealthy you really are in Jesus Christ just by his blood being more precious than gold. How wealthy can you be? One more scripture. If Jesus Christ is the creator of all things, he is the beginning and the end. One more scripture to go along with this is Romans eight seventeen. It says that if we're children, then are we heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be, here's the key, that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And I like that scripture because it's talking about a joint heirs. It's something that we inherit. It's something that what belongs to God, so to say, belongs to us. Not that we took it from him and stole it from him, but there's so much more that we can inherit besides just wealth. What about a new name? What about um, being in the family of God? What about having this precious faith that's more valuable than gold? There's so many benefits that we need to be aware of and look forward to with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And in 1 John 1, 7, it says, but if we walk in the light, there's a contingency here. If you walk in the light as he is in the light, which is Jesus, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And you notice how after the he, um, Israel got in covenant with God in the book of Exodus chapter 24, af and after the, they were sprinkled with the blood, what did they do? They fellowshiped with God. Mm -hmm. And now we, after we get in covenant with Jesus Christ and he sprinkles his blood upon us, then we are able to fellowship with the Father and the Son, and um, he, our sins are cleansed. Amen. You know, these are great benefits. This shows us the blood of Jesus Christ was sprinkled upon us. And we talked about walking in the light. You know, and it is, like Michelle said, contingent upon our walk and our fellowship with him. That key verse back there, as we read to you in Romans eight seventeen, is part of suffering. You know, as Jesus took up his cross, he says to take up our cross. If we're going to walk in the spirit and receive this inheritance and these blessings, it's contingent upon if we're keeping God's word, obeying God's word, staying in his word, keeping his promises. Because it, like we stated before, if we get into another Bible, another doctrine, another belief, we're no longer, so to say, in the covenant with Jesus Christ. Michelle, where else would we like to take the people? As we're talking about the blood of Jesus, he said in Matthew 26, 28, that this is the blood of the New Testament. This is noteworthy. How we are, ourselves are supposed to be in communion with Jesus Christ and being partakers of his blood. Many people have blasphemed the name of Jesus and taken communion with vinous beverages. Some may say that's irrelevant. But the point is with this message, understanding what the blood of Jesus is, how precious it is, and how valuable it is. We pray that you enjoyed the program. If you'd like to write us a letter, please feel free. It's 518 Pleasant Valley, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. You can even email us, Pastor Inman at att.net. Thank you for tuning in, and may God go with you.